everyone. How you doing today? We'll start in just a few minutes. Hi, everyone. Had to check my sound. It's just like summertime out here today or tonight. I've got my elbows on the table. We'll give it just a couple more minutes. I'm just using some scrap um, pieces of two and a half inch strips. Some scraps I had left plus some, some other strips to do. This is just a sample of this uh, wedge ruler. I don't know if it came in a pattern because there were like there was no instructions with it. So I thought maybe if you had one, let's see. Hold on. No, oh, I didn't mean to yawn on you. Well, that's not that's not especially helpful either, is it? Let's see. There you go. There it is. So it's for a two and a half inch strip and then for a one, uh, one and a half inch strip. That's all there is to it. It's got this angle here. Um, I did remember to us talking last time about putting little grips on. Let's see if you can see them. Oh, sorry. I got to do it so the Oh, there you go. Oh, can you see the little? There we go. Oh, come on, light. Stop being in the way. There we go. See the little grippers there? So they, um, so I put them on. It made a world of difference. And it was just something I had in my drawer, one of my, my sewing drawers from who knows what lifetime. And they're just little... They grip this, and they're self-adhesive. They're not quite clear. Oh, there you can see them now. They're like little um, lifesavers. They're not quite clear, but you can easily see through them, so you just don't want to put them in a spot that's especially important. And they were like, I don't know. I'm it says there were 15, but I can't imagine that there were 15 of these, but maybe. I'm down to two, so could be. And like I said, they, I probably got them at Joann's because they caught, carry uh, drits. they called grip, grip this. Oh. Let's see where the camera likes that better. There we go. Grip this. So I know I had mentioned that last time, I think it was, because my ruler was so was so slippery. So we're just give it another minute. Let me know if you're saying so and on. Say hi in the chat so other people can say hi back to you. I'll say hi to you too. I am going to use my one of my favorites, my two and a half inch <clears throat> square up ruler. I love that thing. So where can I set that so I don't lose it? Right there. You'll have to remind me that's where I put it. So let's just wait a, yeah, about one, it's about one minute, uh, 702 I'll go to. So I know sometimes it takes people a bit to get the computer on and get settled. I've been drinking extra water for the last two hours just so I wouldn't cough all over you guys again. Well, you know what I mean. 
So elbow on the table. So let me know in the chat if you have this. It's just called the wedge. Let me know if you, excuse me, if you have that ruler. If you don't have it, uh, this will let you know whether you really want it or not, too. Sometimes, you know, you think you want a ruler, and then after you see what it does, you go, yeah, I don't think so. Or you don't think you want a ruler, and then you see what it does, and you go, yeah, I like that. So it can go either way. So just one more minute. I'm trying to keep stuff from shining in your, in your face. What did I do with my... Oh, that'll help. Now, what did they do with it? See? Told you I'd lose the other one. And I want to remember about my... want to remember about marking. And this is just... I would use... Um, when I show you how to mark it for your sample, I would just use an extra... What is it? Extra fine, ultra fine Sharpie. Like to make it permanent. We set that aside. And my little cheat sheet went to sleep on me. There we go. Okay. So, hi everyone. Good evening. We're using the, or going to show you how to use the wedge ruler. You can see it has the little, um, 45 degree angle edge and it's Eleanor Burns and she does have several patterns um, I believe using the ruler I don't know what they are offhand so I didn't want to do any written instructions that infringes on her you know on her patterns or anything I don't want to get in any trouble um, so if you want to take some notes or um, do your sample for your resource book and then um, just write on there the date of the YouTube video. Oh, hi, Rhonda. How you doing tonight? How's the weather down your way? I was out today and my car said it was 66, and I, I don't believe that for a minute. Felt like 86. Okay, so the first thing you want to remember is um, when you're using a wedge ruler, and this is going to make a braid. I'm going to show you the first braid. Uh, so, you know, we did the braided, <clears throat> we did a braided um, runner before, and I used the uh, Gemini, I think I used the Gemini dies. You know, tonight I can't remember, but I, we're working. Been working the last couple of weeks on Eleanor Burns rulers. Well, I have, and I've taken you along with me because so, I'm tired of having rulers around that I can't remember what they do. Um, so we're just going to do a little sample of this one, um, and it makes two sizes. I haven't done a one and a half, but we'll we'll cut for one and a half. But when you do a, a braid. There's always a right and a left, right and a left, right and a left. And so you have to have literally a right and a left and a right and a left and a right and a left. And when they go together, you know you have the, the right one on the right side because this will be straight this way. See how this is? Let me put them how they're supposed to be there. So you can see how this one is straight. And this one is straight, so you can uh, you can you can um, make sure you're gonna keep a pretty straight edge. And if you if any of you watched the other braided runner, uh, we had to cut a lot off um, because of the type of die we use. Where this ruler is, is made made for this type of uh, braid, and, I, and don't leave too early because I'm gonna show you a. Um, Another type of um, braid to do with this that I think is really cool. But
but you'll notice that you're going to keep pretty well straight going up. Okay, and then you'll just you would just uh, trim this off um, a quarter inch above with these point meets and this in the same meet and the same on the bottom. So we have to have, I'll make a feel, you have to have a right and a left. And you want them so the points, the longest part is facing the center. So you don't want them this way. Because when you put them together, do you see how this would be? You don't have your straight line here anymore. So they got to be the other way around because they're going to go together this way. And you have your straight line on each side. Does that make sense? So you have to have a left and a right. And in this case, I'm going to cut some. Uh, this is just going to be scrappy. So I'm just going to cut some pieces in the left or right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I put them. Uh, some right side up, some upside down. So if I put right sides together in pairs, and this is to use up scraps, and I'll show you when I when I show the uh, when I show the other type of braided running you can make. I'll show you using an actual strip. So let me set these aside for a second. So what we want to do is. And I have to kind of face it towards me. So the strip is two and a half and the ruler is two and a half. So let me see if I can cut from this direction. So I'm using the whole ruler because it takes up all that room. And your strip would be longer. And again, I'll show you how to use it with the strip because uh, you can do it a little differently. But if you've got some scraps, like if you have scrap, I have scraps left over from the from the other um, from the other uh, braided table runner we did, or no, it was a table runner with the horizontal stripes in the middle. So when I cut that and open it up, I'm going to have a right and a left. Oh, I meant to do it the other way. A right and a left. Let's see if I've got another one. So I want, um, yeah, I want to face up one. No, I want to face down one. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get another one this this size. So I've got my fabric wrong side up. And now then now I have a now I have a left plaid and a right plaid. Apparently that was bothering me. So when we sew these together, it's going to be like, I call it, it's going to be like marching, you know, left, right, left, right, left, right. And I've got my machine pretty close. And let me see if that light makes a difference. Yeah, see, if I shut the light, it makes it. I've got my machine light down to a two. Let's see what happens if I think if I go to a one, it gets brighter. The other light gets brighter. So if I go down to one, oh, that's, that's better. I can't see, but that's well. It'll be my excuse not to if I sew crooked. So it's left, right, left, right, left, right. So we'll take our first one. And let me see if I can face this towards you. Don't need the ruler right now. We're going to put them like this. 
Because remember, straight, oh, straight, okay? And remember how I was talking about turning the page? So we're just going to turn the page. And if you need to, to remember which side you're supposed to sew on, we'll put a pin in. Quarter inch seam, but we only need to stitch down as far as to the, well, just a little past the end of that, of this strip. <coughs> we don't need to go all the way down the bottom. There's, there's no fabric down there, okay? I gotta get my pen out of the way. Okay, if I go a tad past, it's okay. All right, and we're gonna give that a little press. And I didn't make note of which way to press it. So I'm gonna press it to the left. I, I don't believe in this case it's going to matter because there's never going to be two seams matching up. Okay, so left, right, left. So I'm going to lay that. Remember, I'm always talking about lay your... Oh, let me turn it towards you. Lay your fabrics down. I got the big machine up because I have to, a project to do. So it's, as you know, I, I'm always complaining it hogs up all the space. So I always lay my fabric down so I know I'm going correctly. So the, the, the reason for the marker is if you want to put on yours one, two, three, and I'll do a few more and number them. That way you'll remember which way to, which way to start going. And if this is a sample, why not write on it? Because that's the hardest thing you're going to need to remember. You'll see from your sample how the wedges go, but you want to know who who was who got sewn first, kind of thing. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over. Okay, and I did want. Which way did I do that? Yes. We did want to press that way. Well, now I've got it all messed up. We did want to press to the left because when we flip this over to sew, the seam allowance will be facing down. So when we're stitching along, this won't flip back up on it. You know, we don't need to worry about it flipping back. It's already facing the correct direction. And again, Sorry, I have to I have to do this in my on my angle for this part. If you want to want to put a pin on, so, so which side you sew on? I have the quarter inch foot with the guide on today. I'm using the seventy uh, eighty eighty twelve seventy eleven. Sorry, took me a minute. Seventy eleven Microtex needle. Regular sewing thread, top and bottom. And you will have, and I'll show you in a second, you're going to have a little, oh, see, I shouldn't have let go. You're going to have a little, um, point sticking out at the bottom. Oop. Here we go. See that little point? So when you're sewing, let me sneak up on the camera so it'll stay focused here. Here we go. When you're sewing your quarter inch seam, you should end up right where, oh, let me move it up a little, right where that little V is. Your quarter inch seam should be right there. Oh, I should have put in the red thread, shouldn't I have? You get some red thread.
Sorry, I was sewing. I was sewing just a short oops, just a short time ago. Just take me a second. That way you can actually see the thread better. I was trying to get a little project done in between things. And when I was sewing, I was could remember I was supposed to change to red thread. And when I got done sewing, I didn't change. Has that ever happened to you? I did change my needle. Yeah, that wasn't so long. Okay, so then we're going to open this up. And let me see. Um, so this is going to have a plain strip to it. So what direction it goes, I would go to the left again, because you've got a double seam here. you got a seam here. You don't want to have a double seam, you know, one seam on top of another. And I just, I roll with a crease right into that. Hold on. That's what happens when you look up from what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, so... Left, right, left, right. Oh, so I'll face it towards you again. Okay. Now, you're going to be apt to do this. Oh, you know what? Hold on. So if we do this and flip it over. See, we. I don't think there's any way around. So the seam is facing up. And... Oh, no. Let's see. The seam is facing up. No, I'm trying to think what's the best, easiest way. Best, easiest. That's a good combination of words. So, if I sew from uh, that little point down, the seam's going right. If I sew from this side, which would make more sense because I can see what I'm doing, that seam is facing up. Can you see it right there? So we just have to be careful uh, when we go past it because the feed dogs might push it back down. But I still think it's better to go this way than back on this seam. So that could be a personal preference for you, whichever way works better. The seam police won't be coming to your door. <laughs> Yeah, after all that talking and moving everything around, I hope I put it put it down right. Okay, so look. So now you can see. Let me get that. There we go. Oh, come on. That light's being that light's being me. Now you can see where the seam comes down right where these the, the little peak of those two fabrics, right there. Now I'm trying to, I don't know, those, seam, those seams are nice and flat. Okay, so left, right, left, right, left. And I'm going to flip that over. Okay, so now my seam's wrong every time. So does that mean if I started at the beginning and went up? I'll try that on the next one. So if I started at the beginning and, and went the opposite way, all the rest would... No, this would still be... This would still be a seam on top of each other. I don't think we're going to win on that one. I think the only difficulty would have been this first one where we didn't want the seam laying on top of the seam. But if we had done that, we wouldn't have that issue the rest of the way. And the only time it happens is right there. So then you could press your seams to the right. 
because now every time my seam is facing up. So I'm going to face it down. I'm only hesitating because we're going to have this um, seam coming up every time. So I'm going to go with my original gut feeling of press the seam, the, this long seam away from this uh, vertical seam. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with that. I think it's a better. I think it's a better idea. And the seam is on top, so we can easily pay attention and make sure it behaves itself. And because I have pivot when I got near that seam, I just uh, I just let my foot off the pedal. But if you don't have pivot, just lift your foot up. Make sure that seam is um, going in the right direction under the foot. Okay, so let me just give the whole thing a quick press. So there's our braid. And it would just be scrappy. And it just looks lopsided because you keep thinking that your eyeball thinks this is the center. And it really isn't. It's, it's here. It just kind of throws you off. So it looks a little funny. But once you cut this off, and cut off the top to make them both straight, you'll be fine. So this is the basic, oh, I didn't use one of these, the basic braid for using your wedge. And like I said, using a Sharpie, I, I don't have a Sharpie handy. I put one, two, three, four, five, and I think after about five, you get the general idea of it. You can put the sixth one down. So I just numbered them one, two, three, four, five, and this will go in my sample book with my, with, in, in my resource book with this sample with my wedge ruler so that I know, I know what to do. What order? I think the hardest part, like I said before, the hardest part is getting started and where do you start? Left, right, where, do you, where, where does it all start? Okay? So that's our first sample. I'll put that over there. Also, if you want to take a just a plain page and uh, take a set like this and staple them onto the page, and just above it, right, left, and right, and staple that right onto uh, right onto your page, and that will that will help you a lot also because that's the only two things you need you really need to know. Okay. Okay. So now I'm gonna take um, a strip. And let me give it just a little press. It kind of got wrinkled while it was while it was waiting for its turn. And I'm going to try to do this facing you. So if you have a whole strip, so look how nicely that grips with those grippers on there. Because the, the mat makes a difference too. But let me just trim off this side first. So it's nice and straight on that side. Okay. Oop. So we have our strip. I don't want mine to fall off the table. Because it'll pull the whole strip right off the table. Okay. So let me see if I can come in a little bit. You can see the, oh yeah, you can see the ruler there now. 
So we'll line up this way because the, the width of the strip is the width of the ruler. We cleaned off that edge. So now we're just going to come across here and cut, okay? So there's a right wedge. And I know you can't, let me see if I can. There, there's a right wedge. Now we can just, we will go in this, in this direction. Now we, we don't want to flip the ruler over. We just want to turn it around. So it's still face up. Line it up with where we just cut. Oh, sorry. We back up again. So we're lined up where we just cut. Now we have a straight edge. Okay. And there's our. Oh, now, did, how did now how did no? Did I do that backwards? How did I get two the same? That shouldn't that shouldn't have worked that way. All right now. Oh. Now I've confused myself. Okay, we were going this way. <laughs> That's really funny. I got to do it again. Hold on. How did I do that? I usually do them right sides together. So bear with me. I was looking to see if this worked. Okay, so we're going. So we're going in this direction. I'm going to have like 15 right that's a right and if i turn this over it's another right so i wouldn't do that i'll do it we'll do it my way i would fold my strip in half let me get that see See what happens when you don't listen to yourself? So let me just cut this edge. I guess that's good if you if you want all all right all right all right right wedges. So if I put my fabrics, let me get rid of my um let me get rid of my um Salvage. That was really funny. Come on, Rhonda, you laughing at that one? That was pretty funny. Okay. I'm going to put right sides together. Then let's start out. So this should give me a pair, a left and a right. Let me get these out of the way so I don't get myself confused. Okay. There we go. Look at that. A left and a right. So right sides together. Let me do another. Um, let me do another strip. So I'm going to take my strip. This is a jelly roll strip or a two and a half inch uh, strip set. Different companies call them different, different things. I lined them up, but I want to get rid of that salvage. And I can use this little ruler to be straight because I can, I'm straight along here. And I would be if I got my head in your way. Okay. Now I want to make sure that I'm lined up, my strip is lined up, and I don't know if my shoulder's going to get in your way to do this. I'm trying to cut this so it's like at your angle. Okay, right sides together. Left and a right. Let me cut one more set because we're going to do a different type of braid this time. So 
So I'm just cutting off the salvage, and I guess I, I put my ruler on like it's supposed to go so I can just turn it. I moved, I moved it. Thought I was going to be smart. Okay, right sides together on the strip. And whoop, left and right. Okay? So you want to make note to get your pairs put right sides together. So if I had my little odds and ends, I would have to pair them up. Or if I was just doing scraps, um, I would still pair them up so that one is right side up, one is right side down. So I know it's a left and a right. Otherwise, we'd be going around in circles. The next thing I want to do is I want to have some squares. And I want the squares, because this is two and a half, um, I want two and a half inch squares. That's why I like my little ruler. I still put right sides together. In this case, it doesn't matter beyond the fact that I'm cutting two at a time. And remember I told you before, keep your fold at the opposite end of where you're cutting. I'm going to cut on this end, heading towards this end. And I just need to... Get that straight. So that when I get to this end, I don't this this isn't a, this isn't good because it come out I just have a sliver but <clears throat> and it makes the two and a half. But let's say I didn't quite have like I had two left. I could open this up because I have that fold and I have that much more to work with. So it helps you get a little more out of your fabric than if you start at the fold and go the other way. Make sense? Okay. Oh, Rhonda says she wouldn't be laughing. I would. I have to laugh at a lot of things I do. Okay, so let's get our rulers out of the way for the moment so they're not shining in your face. Make sure we're closed. Now, we've got to pay a little bit more attention. So we have get all this out of the way. Oh, that's our sample. Can't get rid of that. Okay, we got enough room there? Right. So we got our left and our right. We want to take the left one and just put it over there. We don't want it right now. We're going to take and sew a square. Oh, let me. We're going to sew a square to every right to turn my page here. I keep taking so long it goes to sleep, locks me out. So what we're going to do is we're going to, and we can chain piece these, so we're going to put one on top. Okay, and what it's going to do is, let me make a little visual for you. So if I put this on top, it'll be here. And then the next one and next one, and it's going to look like, oh, I don't know what's with that light today. So it's going to look like that. Isn't that kind of cool? So this time I'm going to match my pieces. Okay? So let's make sure I have this right. Let's put Mr. Lefty over there. Okay. And I'm going to be right here, and I'm going to 
I'm going to do my first one and, and piece it because I always do one whole one before I chain piece in case I'm having a moment and I'm putting it on the wrong side. So my quarter inch seam. I'm going to press towards the square. Well, that wasn't the straightest thing. Can you see that? Oh. Come on, light. Look at that. That's a little crooked, isn't it? It's okay. <laughs> it really is crooked. It really is. Okay. So I'm going to make sure I keep those there. So now... This is my next piece. I'm going to flip this over. And I'm only going to sew, I'm sewing along here. And I only need to sew as far down as that strip underneath like we did the first time. I better stand up and see what I'm doing. And again, I want to make sure that my seam stays where it's supposed to. And I just have to sew a little past this strip here. And I'm going to press the seam to the left. Okay, so there's the beginning of my braid. So when I put the next one on, why do I feel like I have, oh, wait a minute, left, right, left. Just had a, had a moment. Um, all right, what did I do? Put, oh, I took a right. Okay. There we go. There we go. See how it's going to be? So we've checked it now. So we're good to go ahead and put our squares on all of our right sides, right tops. So we can chain piece these, which just means we can do one right after the other. And I can see that all the tips are going in the, on, are on the uh, left side. It's a bit dark over here. And you would go ahead and sew however many you need to, or do them in a group. If you don't want to do, like if you were doing 20 of them, you don't want to do 20, do five at a time or whatever. Whatever is comfortable for you. Okay. So these are all my rights. I'm going to press them with the seam towards the white. Okay, and I want to put them back in the pile in the order that they were. So, because I'm doing matching sides. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, thanks, Rhonda. Rhonda said that's neat. She hadn't seen that braid before. I hadn't either until I started researching this ruler. Well, maybe I had just never did one. I don't. I really don't remember. But I thought, oh, I kind of like that. Now it makes me want to do all braids that way. Okay. So I want to put back in the pile, lefts and rights. So remember, left, right, left. So I'm going to lay that one beside it. 
and flip it over. Oh, look, and now our seam's going down like we want it. And again, you can put a pin in this side if, if, you, if you want to. Making sure it's lined up across the top and the side. And this part will be the same as the original braid with that little extra piece, that little triangle like hanging down the bottom. And I'll show you in a minute. Well, give me a second with the light there. So you can see, and I even have a strand of thread there. So that you can see when the stitching comes down, it is right where this fabric and the little triangle fabric meet. See that? And we're going to press to the left. I look up to see if there's any uh, questions and I end up putting it. Don't look up when you're doing something. Okay? Left, right, left, right. And you'll, in this case, you're going to know you're correct because... Otherwise, see how these two whites would be together if we did right and right by mistake. But see now, it moves up. So the whites are never beside each other. They're point to point. Okay, we're going to just flip this over. All right. Hold on, that darn pressing again. Me, um, we pressed left, we should have pressed right. Right, left, right, left, let's see. Because this time it's gonna be more important because we have to, we can lock our seams because our seams are gonna meet. So that when I put See, our seams meet right at this point. So when I flip this over, this one's up, that one's down. So when we put the left side on, we want to press, I call I guess I'd call it down, press down. It's really not left. Or, I mean, if you, yeah, if, let me see. See, we're pressing down because we're going to be at this seam right here. So we're pressing down towards that center. Oh, I was going to flip this over. That doesn't work, does it? Okay. We'll get the hang of this. But what happens is, is we can then nestle. See how, let me, uh, let me see what I can do with that light. Especially it's because I've got such light fabric. Yeah, let me come on. Let me sneak over here away from the light. So this seam is going left. This seam is going right. So they can lock right side by side. And if you want to, remember how we put a pin just a little ways past the seam so that when we stitch and stop to take the pin out, We've got our needle in our seam so our seam doesn't move. Okay? So we just want to be aware that this top seam is facing towards the machine, which means the foot might want to press it, or push it towards us. I feel like my seam isn't lined up. 
because I want to make sure my my seam is lined up this whole way down. No, it still fe still feels a little off. See if I can get it right. It felt like there was a gap between the two seams. Okay, so when you get close to that um, seam, make sure that the that the seam stays going um, towards the back of the machine. Okay. We're going to open this up. So let's see. Let's see which way we're going to press this. Well, this seam will be fine because it is going to go against a straight piece of fabric. And there's seams. See how there's seams going in the, let me get a, let me get away from that light a little bit. You see how we got seams this way, seams this way. So no matter which way you go, that seam is going to be over some seams. So I'm sending it to the right. Let's see how that works out. Okay, and then I stop, left, right, left, right. Now I need a left. Now, let me show you what I meant about if you put the right on with the right, you see how the the white squares are side by side and they really belong like that. And you'll, you'll see it much easier as you go along. So we know we never want those side by side, so we're on the wrong side. Okay? And again, if you want to put a pin in, just so you know what side you're sewing on, and it helps you get everybody in order. Being a rascal with me today. And you want to put a pin at the bottom. Don't put it too close to the bottom because um, you're going to stop sewing before you get to that bottom part. I got red fuzz everywhere. Oh, no. It was a piece of thread. I thought it was fuzz. I'm going to stop and make sure that my seam allowance is still heading towards the back of the machine. Stop. Line up my raw edges. Okay. So there, oh, there's our left. Now I'm going to be putting, before I press, I'm going to be putting this, this piece here. This seam is facing up. This seam needs to face down. So if I want it to face down, I've got to press. I've got to put the fabric on top where I want the seam allowance to be under, and then just press it forward. And it'll fall the way it's supposed to. Okay? And I want to make sure I've got my two matching fabrics. Okay, so we'll do one more. And I want to make sure my little seams are nestled together. And when I do that, I want to feel 
this whole way down so the whole seam I know is going straight down. So I sewed up a little bit into that seam so it's going to hold it in place because my needle is down. Okay, and I'm just going to press that open. And this is going to be my sample. So let me give it a bit of a press here. We can see. I'm trying to feel. Make sure I'm not twisting that seam underneath. And make sure everybody's happy on the back. So there's our back. Everything's nice and flat. And let's press from the front one more time. And again, normally when you press, leave it on your ironing station, ironing board, ironing station, whatever you're using, um, and let it cool rather than just pick it up and, you know, willy nilly it around. So there we go. You can see how our little points all meet because we did that um, locking the seams. So isn't that pretty? And again, you can write on it one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? And for this sample on your page, save these. So here's your right, uh, left and your right, staple them on a piece of paper, put left and right, and that way you'll know exactly what you're doing for that one as well. Well, that was my, that was my sample for my other one, wasn't it? <laughs> Oops. That's okay. Okay, does that make sense? So... Here's braid one, here's braid, no, let me put them down. Let me try to be fair now. So braid one, braid two. Now this braid is one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven inches wide. And this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight and a half. Same exact strips. This one's seven wide. This one's, what did I just say? Eight and a half. Now I did one, two, three. One, two, three. So let's count from this point to right here. So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it about the same? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, I think you'd get it to eight. It's a little longer, but it's funny because you can see right off that it's, that it's wider. Can you see that? Yeah, Rhonda was saying it breaks it up a little. Like, it, it changes your, uh, it kind of changes your focal point, gives it a whole, gives it a whole different look. This one looks fancy. This one's a fancy one. Summertime motorcycles are out. Sorry about that. Okay, so this is my sample. I'm going to put these two with it, left, right. I'm going to staple these onto a page, blank page, put left, right. If I need to, just right over here, two and a half inch square on your page, and then put the sample behind it where you wrote one, two, three, four, and so forth. Okay, the same with this one. 
I don't know if I've got a... I cut a lot of ripes. Do they have any left? Now I got I got 15 rights, no less. But the same with this one, you put, let me see. There's a right. And let me make myself a left one here. Bear, bear with me one second. So I want a left. I'm going to flip this over. Just so you can see exactly um, what I'm talking about. You know, having a visual um, resource book or samples, whatever you want to call it, makes it a lot easier. Okay. I got a left and a right out of that one. So this would be on another page in another uh, clear um, clear sheet protector. This would be my left and my right, and I would staple these two to the page, put left and right on top, so that you can easily see the difference. There, I'll, I'll shade this, because it's, it's all that white fabric. Um, left and right, so your right one has the square on it. Okay, and then this is in another page. Or put one in the front of the sleeve, one in the back of the sleeve, so that you put the ruler in, and it's all in one sleeve. That's what I would do. I, when I say sleeve, I mean sheet protector. So I'd have a page uh, for each one, but put the uh, back side of the pages together and put them in the same sleeve with the ruler. I think that's the best way to do that. Now let's make one little set of the... Um, one and a half and see how that turns out. So I'm going to set these back there. And I'm see if I can use up some of these pieces that I have. Let's see. Let's let's try this again. This time I'm going to put right sides together. This is my two and a half inch strip. And I need to cut it to a one and a half inch strip. And I did get my ruler out for that. And it tells you right on the ruler that it's a one and a half inch strip. So I'm going to go. One and a half. Okay, there's one. And I'm just going to use some of, um, let's see, I only need a few, so let's come up here somewhere. Okay, and well, let's just do one more. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. I didn't do the best job putting those two together. Come on, get over there. And of course, normally I would take a little more time to... So if I was normally cutting this two and a half inch down to one and a half, when I laid them right sides together, I'd trim a little bit off one side, turn it around to the other and trim a little of that one off to get my one and a half. That way I don't have to worry about those edges being perfect. Because once I trim a little on each side, that would make them, that would make them nice. So... So I'll show you what I would do. So if I wanted one and a half, 
I'm going to go to the two. Might as well show you what I exactly what I do, right? Then I would go to the one and a half because now this side that was over here that I just trimmed, I know the two layers are even. I keep making them longer and longer. Each one's longer than the other thing. Okay, does that make sense when you're trimming something up and you've got that excess? Um, trim a little off each side. That way you don't have to fight with getting everything just exact. Okay, so I don't have any fold on this one. So this has two one and a half inch strips on it, um, pick, um, drawn on it. So let's see what that's about. So if I line up this one, so there's one more out here, and I know it's hard to see. So if I cut this one, I'm not sure. Well, see, I can't, oh, I see, that's why, oh, I had my head in your way, I'm sorry. That's why, because, makes perfect sense, so when we're going this way, we need this edge, okay? If we turn it, we can't get the, the, the one and a half ends right here. We can't, we can't cut through the ruler. So we just move it down to the second one. So here's the second drawn one there. Well, that just makes too much sense. So let's make sure we got a left and a right. Oh, I got to make sure the, the pairs are lined up. Did I put through? I put. <laughs> Why do they look like two different fabrics? Don't they look like two different fabrics? That's kind of funny. They look like two different fabrics. And look, we got a pair of legs left. Okay, so I'll do that again. So let me. Let me see if I can show you. There you go. So now you can see. There's two, two little flying geese. So if we lay this down, we can't use the first one. We've got to bring this over because we have to get to this cut edge. Oh, sorry. To this cut edge. So let me do that. So this time we need the right side of the ruler to, to make the cut. Okay. Now, let me put this back on here. Hopefully it don't all fall off. Okay. So we needed the first the right hand side of the one and a half, there we go, to be able to make this cut. When we turn the ruler to follow that line, we want to cut right there, but the ruler's there. So if we move it over to the second picture, so there's the there's a there's a line. And these, oh, there it is. See that line? So that line lines up there. So now we're able to cut there. Well, that's just all that, isn't it? Somebody was thinking.
Okay, so there's my left and, and right. And because I cut two, I got an extra left and right. So I'm just going to cut one more, one more set. But I wanted you to see how the ruler worked. So I'm going to save these two because these will be my little samples for my page that I'm going to staple on and put left and right. Okay, now I need some one and a half inch squares because we're going to do the same as we did the second one. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'll have to remember to put a square on that one. So we cut a strip. I cut a strip that's one and a half, and I cut it down from um, from the from a piece of a two and a half that I had. I'm just taking the taking the wrinkle out that I put in it when I was piling stuff up here. So I'm going to do right sides together, though it doesn't matter. But I just like to cut. I like to cut two at a time. And remember, the fold's over here. But the first thing I need to do is I have some salvage there. So my two and a half inch ruler has a one and a half. See the black? So that's my one and a half. Maybe. Let's see which way. I, I had the worst time with this. Here we go. So my one and a half is in black and it's running along this bottom edge and it's even with the top edge. And I just want to cut that, oops, just want to cut that salvage off. And I can turn it around. So I don't know if you can see. So the black is one and a half and it has black lines. The white is the even number, and it has, there you go, it has white lines. So see the white lines are the even numbers, and the black lines are the one and a half numbers. Which way should I do this way, I guess? There we go. So, oops, sorry. So now you can see... My one and a half dot is here running along the bottom, and my one and a half dot is on the left running across the bottom. It takes, I tell you, it does take a second for your eyeballs to to get that one and a half. So I'll just cut a few of these. Okay, so I want to remember. So this is my little sample. I want to remember to put a, a square on the top of my sample before I forget. Oh, it has a print on it. I could, didn't even see that. The other one was plain white. I thought it was the same. And I'm pressing towards the white, which we don't normally do. So there's my little. I just gave it a quick iron to flatten it out. So there's my left and right that I'll sta staple to my page. So here's my left and right. And I'm going to put the squares to the right side only. And I can. Uh, chain piece them, which means one right after the other. So let me just do um, three, I guess. Just so you can see the difference in size between the two, because this is kind of tiny. It would be cute to have a, a little uh, braided mug rug. I'd like that. 
or if you were making a bag or a pocketbook, whatever you want to call it, and have um, have a little uh, braid uh, going like horizontally across or up the center vertically, that'd be kind of cute. You know, you don't always have to make a whole quilt out of something that's tiny. Okay, so I'm not going to use that one. So we'll just... So you can put these squares on pretty fast when you're... Um, when you are um, chain piecing. And I want to make sure I put these back in the order they were so I think he was first let's see what I got here yep so first second first second and I think this one looks better to be third. One, two, three. One, two, three. I just, I'm, because I'm doing them the same colors on each side. Okay? So we're going to take a left and a right. Okay? And you remember the first one, first one is the hardest one. So we're going to flip this over. So if you just put it how it's supposed to go, and don't forget, we got a seam allowance, so they're not going to seam the same size. Just going to flip this over. In that very first one we do, we don't sew the, sew the whole way down. We're just sewing long enough to get past this strip. If it helps you to remember, you can always make a little first set you know the just the one and the two and uh, have that stapled on the page below these guys whatever visually helps you when you take this out you know a year from now and go you know what, what was what was this one and we're pressing to the left okay so left right left and again you'll know because if i took the right it would end up being these white ones would be side by side instead of staggered see how they're point to point so if i did it this way do you see how they're side by side one whole white is against one whole white that never happens it would be point of one square to point of the other. So we know we have to put a left on. I'm just trying to think of some things that will help you um, remember. Whatever it takes to help you remember makes it so much easier because we don't always un remember, we don't always understand what we wrote a year ago. You know, you make all these great notes, and then a year later, or six months later, or in some cases, two days later, it doesn't make as much sense as it did. Um, I think this one has to go right. And I'll know which way that seam goes because of, of, the, of the white one. So the white one, the seam's going up. So let's see if we made... The white one, the seam goes down. Let's try that. Let's see how that works. So I'm putting the seam up, and the white seam is going towards the blue, like you normally would. So right, left, right, left. I mean, <laughs> oh, my God. Left, right, left, right. That was sad. Funny, but sad. Okay, and I'm matching that, that seam up. Okay, Rhonda, you have to laugh at that one. Because that was pretty funny.
made sense to me when I said it. Okay, so if I push this one up, yeah, so I think pressing the white, like, like usual, you'd press the white to the dark, because this might not be white in any case, but I think that it's a good idea, I'm sorry that white is so glary, to pr when you do your square, press it towards the wedge. Okay, left, oops, sorry, left, right, left, right, left. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that was funny. I was looking to see if Rhonda said anything of my left, right, backwards. And this will be our last week of... Um, Ellen is rulers for a little bit because we gotta, you know, we gotta change it up. So if I press that, yeah, so if I'm pressing this one just up like away from these seams. And because I changed and pressed the white towards the wedge, so the square towards the wedge, that works out much better. Okay, and then I'm just going to press that up so the seam will go up. So if you think of it as seams going up and the original square behind the wedge. So let me just give this a press. And I am pressing a little closer to the edge than I normally would, but this is going to be a sample, so I really want it nice and flat. And I'll show you the back. So the back is, there we go. The back is sitting nice and flat. So we're going up and up with our seams. And give it one more press on the front again. There we go. And see, when you're done, you're just really trimming off these little dog ears. And just straighten it a little bit. When we did the uh, one with the with the uh, rectangles, there was much more to cut off. So let's have our. Let me back this up a minute. So where's my big one? On my head. Okay, so you can see the. <laughs> it looks like looks like a monster. We got all my junk in the way. Let me get some of that out of the way. Got to keep this. This is my little sample. So There we go. Look at the difference. You know, it's about the same amount of sewing, but depends what you're doing, what you're going to want them on. So this little one is just about half of the big one. So it is one, two, three, four. And this was... Uh, eight and a half, I think it was. So I can set this little one in half of the other one. So there's your three samples. Oh, there we go. I love this little guy. I really do like the, I do like that white square in there, which now makes it look like a, um, diamond instead of a square so it's a square on point but you know pretty simple to put together and if you look at this to me you look at this and you go geez how the heck did they 
so that is there why seems what's you know what's going on there and, it, and it's really it's really once you get going it's really quite mindless so if you want to spend an afternoon stitching something that doesn't require a lot of thought once you get those first couple done and you'll have your little samples um it's really quite a uh Quite a nice relaxing sew, I will say. So there we are. What, which way can I turn that doesn't like that light? I guess I better stay about right there, I guess. So there we are. This is two and a half inch strips, two and a half inch squares, one and a half inch strips, one and a half inch squares. Okay, so let me just make sure there's no questions. And remember, you got your little samples, so this one is going to go with this little guy. And if they can't all fit in the same sleeve protector, just put a note on whichever one isn't, or at the top, wedge ruler, wedge ruler, wedge ruler kind of thing, because you can't put the wedge ruler in two different pockets. You can try, but well, it, I don't think it'll work. Okay, so let me just double check, see if there's any questions. Which really meant I needed a drink of water in the worst way. So we're good to go. Thanks, Rhonda, for chatting with me. Hope you have a nice evening. And again, if this is the kind of thing you like to do, having this wedge ruler really made it easy. And it's uh, Quilt in a Day, Eleanor Burns, The Wedge. And you could make them shorter, but I don't know. I kind of I think it's the perfect length. So the wedge is actually a um, little more than six and a half on the, on the long side. Okay. So there, you, oh, there we go. I'm trying to turn it again so that there we go. Well, yeah, let's take these guys off. There we go. Big and little, big and little wedge. Two and a half, one and a, two and a half inch strip, one and a half inch strip, two and a half inch square, one and a half inch square. So thanks for joining in, everyone. And if you're watching later on, thanks for watching. Um, be sure if you would be kind enough to subscribe to my channel, Miss Lorraine Schoolhouse and ring the little bell for the um to get the announcements of when i either load a video up or, or go online and if you like the video thumbs up please and you have a great day thanks again for joining in bye